Hey what's up guys I am Nitej and this is a video about the single responsibility principle Single responsibility principle is a part of the solid design principles and it was defined by Robert C Martin The simplest definition of single responsibility principle is that a class or a function within a class should have only one functionality and there's only one reason to change classes which are not independent of each other are difficult to modify whenever we have to maybe fix a bug or extend the existing functionality when a class is following the single responsibility principle then it is much easier to maintain by us and our entire team simply because their purpose is clear and concise same logic applies to functions within a class Here are some of the benefits when entities like classes and functions are following the single responsibility principle. It helps in preventing introduction of unintended bugs while making new changes to existing code. Code review practices are also easier to perform when classes are following the single responsibility principle. Also when classes or functions are already have a single responsibility, then it is much easier to refactor them. So how do we design classes which follow SRP? Well, for the most part it's really simple. Make sure the class responsibility is not very generic so that it encompasses a wide range of functions. When we work in a team, then we may need to discuss with other devs as well before implementing a class. Everyone can have a different perspective on single responsibility for a class, so it is better to communicate with the team rather than having the team finding it hard to modify or code the classes that we have created let's now see a code example in which you will see how a class can have multiple responsibilities making it harder to modify or to fix bugs and then how we can subdivide that class to divide its existing responsibilities into multiple classes over here the log error class has three different functions The first one is to log the errors to a text file. The second one is to log the error text into a database table, and the third one is to get or fetch the error logs based on the type of the error log. So if it's a text file, then it will read the error log from the text file. Otherwise, it will read from a database table, and then it will return the string value from where this function is called. Nevertheless. I think you can clearly see that these three functions can be broadly divided into two categories. The first two functions are there to log the error or to write the error text in some other place like in a text file or within a database table and the third one is to fetch the error logs or to read the error logs from where they are saved depending on the type argument which has been supplied while this function is being called. So now when we have two different utilities or purposes of functions within a single class then this class log error is clearly not following the single responsibility principle and what we can do is we can create another class to get the error logs based on their type and then have the first two functions within this log error class so for that we can create another class which can be called as load error logs and within this class we can have this get error logs function and we can remove this function from the first class so now both of these classes have a single responsibility the first one log error is only responsible to log the errors and the second one load error logs is only responsible to load the error logs which have already been saved now here is a tricky part some of you may decide that logging and reading error logs are associated with same functionality and thus should be part of a single class sometimes it can be difficult to identify the boundaries between the different functions and thus it's hard to divide the responsibilities between classes it is then up to the developer how they interpret the functioning of a class in order to be able to apply single responsibility principle for them also it is much easier to implement the single responsibility principle in classes when we are designing them it will be harder to refactor the classes later when they become complex and have multiple responsibilities if the project follows partial deployment strategies then it is better for classes to follow single responsibility principle in order to deploy only those assemblies which are updated 
So it really helps if different functionalities are divided between different assemblies so that it will be easier to partially deploy them. If the single responsibility principle is not followed or is broken, then it will mean that classes are not independent of each other and hence partial deployment will not work as intended. The exception to classes following the single responsibility principle can be utility classes or maybe generic function libraries. Or maybe if you want to have some constant values listed within a class or maybe a list of key items. In such situations, single responsibility principle cannot be followed and because such kind of classes are mostly very easy to maintain, we probably don't need SRP for them anyways. So that was everything about single responsibility principle in this short video. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask them using the comments. I will see you next time. Till then, take care and have fun.